Hey guys, and welcome back to an amazing new Jetpack Compose tutorial in which I will show you how you can implement a shimmer effect in Jetpack Compose. A shimmer effect is something that kind of reveals where certain content will be placed after loading. So let me quickly relaunch the app so you can see that. I'm sure you've seen that in tons of social media apps where, yeah, this is basically the loading animation. And after that, after the loading is finished, we will see the actual content on our screen. And maybe before we start with this, let me explain how this works, this animation, by relaunching this with a longer delay. Um, so in the end, it's really a simple animation. We just have a gradient from light gray to a little bit darker gray to light gray again. And then we animate the offset of that gradient from left to right. And we just repeat that, yeah, for infinitely basically and until we um, hide our shimmer display again. So let's jump into Android Studio, empty Jetpack Compose project and here we want to go into an into a root package and create a shimmer list item. Let's select file and yes we want to create a shimmer list item here in form of a composable like this. This will receive an is loading boolean so it knows when to show the actual shimmer effect and when to show yeah the actual content. We want to pass a lambda content after loading, which will be a composable lambda. So here we can simply pass whatever we want to show for this certain item after that is loading boolean is actually set to false. And we want to be able to pass a modifier from compose equal to modifier. So how will we do this and how can we implement this to make it as reusable as possible? I don't want to implement this shimmer animation in this shimmer list item. What I want to do much rather is I want to create a custom modifier so we can very easily apply the shimmer effect to any type of composable. And then depending on how we want this to look like, so how these uh, shimmer boxes look like, we can then easily add this modifier to other composables like the shimmer list item. So to do that, let's have an extension function for modifier and say we have a shimmer effect and that is equal uh, that returns a modifier and is equal to composed. Composed is a function that we can use to compose a modifier, a custom one, um, that is stateful. So where we have state that changes. In our case, the changing state is simply the animation, so that we offset our gradient. And we can then easily just apply that custom modifier to any type of composable to apply that gradient animation. So here we will need a bunch of states. On the one hand, the size, which is equal to remember mutable state of int size dot zero. So we just need to keep track of the size of the actual composable where we attach this modifier to, um, because depending on the size, we need to change the um, start offset and the end offset of our gradient. Let's hit Alt Enter um, to actually import this, or maybe it uh, this one here, import get value and mutable state off, import again. And then here in this function, we of course need to return a modifier, um, which is why we get this error right now. Next up, since we do have an infinite animation here, we want to get this transition here by saying, remember, infinite transition, which you can then use to create such an infinite animation. And then we want to animate the start offset X. So we just animate the X position of our gradient and we just start that all over again after it finished. And we can say by animate, um, animate float as state, actually not that one, by transition, we need to use our transition, animate float, the initial value is minus two times size dot width dot two float. Um, I just experimented with these values. So we just start um, the gradient somewhere outside of our composable. We can then say the target value is just two times our size dot width dot two float. So we animate it outside of our actual box by twice the amount of the width of our box. And the animation spec, so how our animation um, works over time, so the animation curve and the duration. Let's choose a tween here, where we want to say the duration milis is just one second. So we just use one second and then we start this animation again. Then after that, we want to return a background modifier since we can use that to return a gradient. And we do get an error here, infinite repeatable spec. Oh, okay, because we can simply pass a tween here. We need to pass an infinite repeatable here. And then here we can pass this for the animation. So simply tween and a thousand milliseconds duration, and then that will work just fine. 
Then for this background modifier, we now want to pass a brush, which is used for gradients. Brush dot horizontal gradient. No, actually a linear gradient, because we want this gradient to be uh, kind of diagonal um, from the top left to the bottom right. We then define some colors in a list here. Now we need to define the first color, so where the gradient starts, which is simply, yeah, let's pick a color and then uh, this little color box will appear where we can uh, select the custom color. Let's choose some kind of um, light gray, something like this. Then we can duplicate that two more times. And just for the middle color, we select something slightly darker. And then we will have a nice little gradient for our shimmer effect. And then since we want to animate this, we also need to tell our gradient that it should actually use a flexible start offset. So here in our brush, we want to say our start is equal to offset, start offset x, and the y value is simply zero. And the end offset, so where we want to um, end with our gradient is simply our, our bottom right corner of our box in addition with our start offset. So start offset dot x plus size dot width dot to float. And y is simply size dot height dot to float. So this is just the, the very first top left corner and then if our um, start offset gets animated, this corner simply gets animated to the right. And the same for the end offset, just that we refer to the bottom right corner here. And then one more thing we need to do is we need to update our size that we have here by going in here to our, like at the end of our background composable uh, modifier and saying on globally positioned. Here we want to set our size equal to it.size. So this is simply called when our composable has been positioned and then we can get the size of it and update our state. And now we have a working modifier which we can apply to any type of composable to apply a shimmer effect. So in here for our shimmer list item, we want to first of all check if we're loading. So if we should display the shimmer effect and then we want to have a row modifier is modifier, whatever we passed here. And then we'll just use placeholder composables here where we apply this modifier. So for example, a box where we say modifier dot size, let's say that's 100 dp, import dp, pressing alt enter, and then we say we have our shimmer effect on that box. Let's then have a spacer with, uh, with a width of 16 dp, and now we simply want to have a column for our two texts, so maybe I quickly launch this again, so you can see what we're currently building. So here we have our box with a size of 100 dp, and then we now want to have a column with our two boxes, which simply kind of show the text here. So Let's have that column here. Uh, modifier is simply modifier dot weight one F. So we simply fill the rest of the space of our row. And then we have a box to show our first line of text where we say modifier dot um, fill max width. And we say it has a height of 20 dp. And we apply our shimmer effect. Then we want to have a bit of spacing again, height. 16 dp and we can copy our box for the second row and here we can say let's say we just fill 70 percent of our whole width and that's it for our shimmer list item we only now want to go to our if statement at the end here and in the else block we want to show our content after loading so oops content after loading so whatever we want to show in that case we will then show it so in main activity we can go ahead and create a little list. Um, yes, lazy column. Let's add a modifier, modifier fill max size. And in here, we want to have an items block of let's say 20 items. And each item will be a shimmer list item. Is loading, let's just have a state that simulates a loading progress. So we have var is loading is by remember mutable state off um, true initially import that here we can then say launched effect pass true as the key and here we simply delay this launched effect block for let's say 10 seconds and then we set is loading to false so we just update our is loading state after 10 seconds to simulate that 
loading, um, yeah, loading state. Normally you would get that from the view model if your API call is loading or whatever. Then here for the shimmer list item, we want to have our is loading boolean, which we pass. Want to have our content after loading. I want to have a modifier. Modifier dot filmx width. And let's add some padding of 16 dp import dp. And now let's add the actual content after loading, which will be like this image and this text here that will show afterwards. Here we simply create a row, modifier, modifier filmx width, add some padding, 16 dp, and we add a little image. Well, let's make it an icon instead with an image vector. So here we can use our little house icon. Icons default home. Content description is null. And we want to make this image as big as our um, simulated shimmer display. So size that 100 dp. Then we want to add a spacer below our image. Spacer where we assign a width of 16 dp. And then we simply have a text that is a bit longer. So we just, yeah, that it spans over multiple lines. This is a long text to show that our shimmer display is looking perfectly fine or whatever. And if we now launch this on our emulator, we should be able to see a working shimmer display, hopefully at least. There we go. That is looking perfectly fine. Our shimmer display is working and after 10 seconds we should be able to see our actual content in our lazy column. There we go, that is working very fine. And you can now use this uh, kind of modifier for any type of compose build you actually have in your app. So if you, for example, have a circular image or so, then you simply all, uh, only need to create such a new, maybe shimmer profile uh, item or so, where you apply the shimmer modifier to your circular um, profile image. So if we were, for example, to make this box um, and we clip it to a circle shape and we relaunch it, then we should be able to see a circular shimmer animation. You can see um, we can now very easily apply this to any type of shape um, since with modifiers we can very easily change that shape and manipulate it. If that helped you to create a cool animation in Jetpack Compose, then you will definitely also love my Android Premium courses, which you can find in this video's description. So these will really take you to an industry level Android developer. So do check these out. And apart from that, I wish you an amazing rest of your week and I'll see you back in the next video. Bye bye.